when you look at the risk element, you have reduced it from about, I think, 70-80% in terms of risk when you started in 2005-2006, you've reduced it to just under 50%. 15. How does... Uh, under 15. Under 15%. Yes. Now, how did you do this? Because we know that in Nigeria there is this element of people wanting to take a loan and thinking you don't have to pay back. Well, I, I think, again, that's a misconception because generally people believe that that's where character comes in, believe that there are so many impediments, so many uh, problems, challenges to them that um, why should they pay for it? But the risk is you. So what we have done is try to distill it, to look for the really very serious entrepreneurs. If you are committed to a business, because as I told you, I have been a manufacturer myself, if you are committed to a business, you will put your money where your mouth is. So what we say to the entrepreneur to be able to shift them, the, the, the wheat from the shaft, is to say to them, okay, this is the business you want to do. For you to demonstrate seriousness to us, give us security that's outside of the business so that when the going gets tough, you're going to stay there. If the going gets tough, you know that it is not just the business you will lose. You're going to lose something outside of this business. So that demonstrates to us whether or not you're really committed to that business. Isn't there the fear that if you use your home and everything else you have as collateral to run a business mm -hmm. might then become a case of they want my grandfather who's dead and they want my mother who's still alive as collateral. Isn't there that fear? Not really. For Because I have been there. You know, I've, I've been there. I've won the t-shirt. So I know. When you're committed, when you want to do something, you put you are expected to put your all. That is the discipline that it takes. For an entrepreneur, you will fall down seven times. The successful ones are those that get up. We are not looking for those entrepreneurs. The first sign of trouble, they're walking away. No. We don't want your grandfather, we don't want your father. But if you don't if you haven't at a certain age been able to accumulate enough wealth, then your family, your immediate friends should be able to vouch for you. If they can't vouch for you, I don't know who you are. Why should I vouch for you? When the resources that are meant for all Nigerians, I give it to you and you walk away with it, I have a responsibility to my country that that sort of indiscipline will not happen on my watch. So you coming to me have to demonstrate to me what seriousness to that we will be like those countries that are, we are importing goods from. I don't want the next generation to be poor. And therefore, it is my responsibility to ensure that you, walking through that door, demonstrates beyond reasonable doubt that you will stay with that business when it gets tough. So we're saying wow. there is growth. That is already scary. <laughs> Me, as a woman who wants to come to BOI to take a loan, because they also say that when the women are there, they're often stricter than the men. I mean, they follow the rules to the last letter. The women also are very nurturing. So, for instance, you come to me, you have a business, and I've told you all of these things. Now, it is your responsibility to ensure that you stay in line. It is my responsibility also to ensure that you succeed. So, for instance, you have come to us, you've done all of these things. At the end of the day, you can't even get NAFDAQ approval to be able to ensure that you start production. Secondly, your market. You don't know the market. I know the market because guess what? I have been lending to those customers who are going to be your customers, those bigger customers. That's why we do the value chain. So I say to you, okay, you have tried. We know our country. Bring somebody, I'm going to talk to my colleague who's the CEO there. Mm -hmm. So I write him a letter. I give the list of all of these guys. I say, you, you, look, please help us. So, so you, you don't have to worry. Help them in writing out letters to facilitate the ability to get the results. So one, we will, uh, we will facilitate your ensuring that all of those other bottlenecks that you face, they're removed. Mm -hmm. Because you have demonstrated commitment. Yeah. You have demonstrated discipline. You have d demonstrated a desire to be part of the change agent in our country. You have demonstrated to me, to my colleagues, to my staff, that you are one of those that's going to change the name of Nigeria. You are Inherently, your ability to actually access those loans from the Bank of Industry, you've set yourself aside. You have told the world that You're I am worthy. a 
you are very worthy of this facility. Mm -hmm. You are going to be one of those that will ensure that our passports are not swiped. You are one of those that will ensure that we are a strong nation. So we therefore put our all into ensuring that you succeeded. So That's it becomes less do. scary for whoever this <laughs> entrepreneur is because when you come in and you listen to Miss Oputu or any of uh, members of staff of this organization and they tell you, you have to this, you have to that, and you <laughs> shoot this and you shoot that, and then you eventually prove your mettle and you get all this kind of support in terms of helping to facilitate things with banks. Now, let's look at the issue of the growth of Nigeria. We've heard about the fact that our GDP does not reflect on the pocket of the man on the street. Yes, our GDP is growing, but in terms of growth of the economy, it's not obvious. Well, it's not that it's not obvious. It's that it's not as impactful on employment, for instance, and poverty, because the, it is growing. Uh, for You have to have that growth in GDP for us to do what we're doing because if we don't grow the GDP the economy can't move so we it is all the facets of the economy moving together the manufacturing for instance fell where is the GDP coming from it's coming from ICT oil and gas and all those and they're not famous for being great employers of labor so we try to fill the gap if you look at something in isolation you see something different. So it's every part of the nation working together. That's why when your first comment was, uh, well, it's too strict, you're asking for all these things. We have to be that way and stay that course for all the various parts. Because guess what? There are more and more people who now believe, who come out and say, they can't be that bad. If in the first year they did only 11 billion, the second year they did, and now they're doing 230, 240 billion going up. I'm going to try my luck too. Let's hear what they have to say. So it is all the various facets working. And it's also in the average Nigerian believing. Because you also have to believe that you can be part of that change process to make the effort to go into it. Now when we say that a lot of Nigerians have the entrepreneurial uh, desire and passion, we all want to own our business. We're not a nation of people who just want to work for government. We want to own something of our own, be our own CEO or empties. We love that. Why is it that we don't have a lot more people coming to BOI for loans? Well, no, we do have a lot coming. We have a lot. Oh, but you're just it, not giving them the no, chance no, to no, take No, 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 it's not. It's just that we don't have enough money. Uh, one of the greatest challenges that we've had is, is just the share uh, uh, size and uh, everybody wants to ensure that we expand. But there, there, there are various things that are um, mitigating against the Before economy. you say that, let me just find out what's the percentage of those who come to you that end up being able to get uh, loans? Well, so if you have 200 people, what percentage eventually get loans from bank? I, I would say, we, 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 if you say all comers, uh, maybe 50%. But in terms of what I say is the yes. But That's in terms large. of the, in terms of the serious applications that come, the serious applications, I would say nearly ninety percent, because I've I've explained to you all of the we we have it on our website, we have it on our forms. It is distilled into various languages. So when you take a look at our criteria, we make it quite clear. This is what qualifies you to actually apply for a loan. Mm -hmm. When you take into consideration those who walk through the door with those sort of applications, I would say more than 90% of the serious applications. But some of them are not serious. If you can't do me a one-page application. That's <laughs> what you're saying is that I heard about you. But <laughs> I know what money. No, no, no. And <laughs> it is interesting to just let you know I'm here. <laughs> but when you are a serious applicant, you kind of take seriously what we're doing mm. and you, you look at the criteria. For some people, we tell them, you know, you look good, but maybe you need to go, for, uh, <laughs> go to the Enterprise Development Center, which is all over the country, and we name it. Go to this Enterprise Development Center, take a little training, or go to Smedan. You know, go, mm. go somewhere, learn something. Because if you come like this, you're going to be so frustrated. Just have a sense of what business is. 
it's not enough. I mean, you're a great journalist. You want to come and do business with us? What do you know about business, for instance? Not a lot. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to learn to demonstrate yeah. to me that you're serious because you look, I would even have a long conversation with you. But my guys in the field who have targets, they're seeking those who are good at it. So you, you, you're going to be kind of an impediment in their way, yeah? It's all right. Time waste waste time. Exactly. <laughs> Please. Okay. Okay. Please. Okay, you were saying, sorry, Alera, you were talking about the challenges that you have in terms of financing a lot of these uh, projects that come your way. And you end up in a situation where you really can't do as much as you would love to do. What are these challenges, one and then two? How are you mitigating against these challenges if to the, make sure that you're able to give out more? The first one is what you actually had said. That is the um, um, business, understanding business. You may, have, you may have the desire. You may want to be an entrepreneur. But you have to have the basic understanding of how to run a business. Because some people don't even understand the di difference between revenue and profit. And they could spend all the revenue if something came. So you have to learn all these things. You have to also understand your market. You have to know the difference between um, depreciation, that this machine is not going to be there all the time, and therefore set aside something for fixing it. But when you are new, so anyway, just how to run a business. Uh, some of it, some people are intuitive, others are not so intuitive. So there are some basic rules. By the time they speak to you, for five minutes, they have a sense as to which category you, you fit into. So that's one. Just understanding what business is. That was the first problem that we faced when we decided that it was SME we were going to work on. The second one of, um, so what we did in order to mitigate against that is to send them to uh, the Enterprise Development Center. So we have in Lagos, for instance, we have the Lagos Business School that has a fantastic one. They also do mentoring, they do all kinds of things. So we advise them, go to that EDC. Then for state governments, uh, that, that comes together. When we also found that we didn't have enough money, we didn't have any funding for small businesses or for any business, for instance, we decided we were going to go to the state governors who are actual chief executive officers of their states. We tell them, these are people who voted you into power. 